Welcome to this course on narrowband imaging. I'm going to begin by talking about the filters. Normally, when we take images of the world around us using our digital cameras, we're doing so using red, green, and blue filters. As I'll describe in more detail later, these are broadband images. And in order to get the picture to come out on your screen, or even by looking at your camera, there are rules that you need to follow, certain constraints. Those constraints are necessary to give you the result that is expected. In narrowband imaging, it is different. Those rules, if you will, are much more relaxed. And that leads not only to a much larger subject matter, but also leads, in some sense, to more complexity. There are more options, more operations that you can perform, and that's what this, cor this course is going to be all about. So again, I begin with the filters. This happens to be a camera that I am currently setting up to go to Chile. And it's the filter wheel. It's not even the camera. The camera's over on the left. The filter wheel here, I needed to test because it's a dual filter wheel to make sure that it is selecting the filters properly. You know, when people buy their filters, one of the first things they do is they put them in and then they go try to take pictures with them. But I don't know how many people actually look through them. It is instructive to do so. It explains a lot about the filters. It does visually kind of give you an intuition about what we'll see in some of the plots that I'll be showing shortly. So let me show you my test here where I'm playing this video. I had to run across the room to go start, press the button on the computer to tell it to go. And it begins by selecting the open filter, which is, there's no filter there, a clear filter. And then we're gonna see the blue, the green, the red, just as it is listed there on the camera, which I think is a great way to make sure that the world makes sense. So here we can see blue light coming through the filter, green light coming through the filter, but pay attention to the red. That's the red filter. And what I'd like you to note is it doesn't look very red. It looks orange. And that is a very important um, attribute to this particular filter because it's a broadband filter. It's not a narrowband filter. So let's keep going forward with the video. The next one we'll see is the H-alpha filter. And you can see how red, of course, that appears. Also kind of striking, I think, is the fact that the O3 here, it doesn't look quite green or, or even cyan, teal, it actually looks more blue to my eye. But keep in mind that we are looking here um, at a picture, you know, of filters with my phone. Let me just pause it here and show that the uh, S2, the Sulfur 2 uh, filter, also looks very red. And if you compare the two, this one is a slightly deeper red than the H-alpha is. So I just wanted to begin there by showing you literally the light as it appears as it comes through the filter. These are the photons that are permitted to pass through these pieces of glass. Most people have a fundamental understanding about how filters work, but I think there are some nuances that can be appreciated that help to explain why, in terms of narrowband imaging, there are some special considerations that we give both to the acquisition of the data as well as to its processing. Now, filters let pass certain wavelengths of light. That is the filter's transmission of light, of photons. One of the interesting things is that the detectors that we use, CMOS detectors and used to be CCD detectors, they are agnostic. They don't care what wavelengths of light hit them. They just are photon counters. All they do is count the light. The only way to know what color of light was incident on a detector is to have a filter do that job. So here in this graphic, I am showing that a filter is discriminating in the different wavelengths of light. These little balls represent photons of different wavelengths, but only the ones that are reddish are passing through. In fact, we see this filter as reddish because photons must be coming from the background and coming through it, and the only ones that are allowed to pass are the ones that are of a reddish wavelength of light. Now you can see how the other photons are unhappy about this. They have a little bouncer guy who's controlling everything. Remember in the video how I showed one filter was the red filter. It, it was called the broadband red filter. So let me pause there and say that broadband, when we're talking about a band, we're talking about a number of wavelengths. It actually is synonymous with the word wavelength, but when you have different wavelengths of light that you're considering, 
however many of them that you have, the more of them you have makes a filter become labeled as broad because it lets pass more wavelengths of light, where narrowband, of course, refers to a filter which lets pass very few, or certainly much fewer than a broadband filter, wavelengths of light. There is no uh, particular number which says what is narrow and what is broad, other than typically um, narrowband wavelengths of light might only let you know, a range of maybe 10 or less nanometers in terms of wavelengths of light. So from this, if you remember, again, in the video, we looked at that red filter, and it looked a little bit orange. And what that means is some of these, it would be perhaps yellower wavelengths of light or not quite as red, orange wavelengths of light, are being permitted to go through that piece of glass. So there would be more than a single color, if you will, more than a single wavelength of light passing through, very specific wavelength of light passing through. So this graphic might be more akin to what would be the H-alpha filter. So transmission with regards to a filter refers not only to the wavelengths of light, but also in some sense to the number of uh, photons that get through at a particular wavelength or those wavelengths that the filter does allow to pass. So for example, here we might have, you know, there's 10 little guys over here on the left, but coming through on the right, there are only five of them. So filters themselves have inefficiency. Now you want that efficiency to be as high a number as possible. I would also like to add that many of the narrowband filters that are used are of the interference type, which means that the angle that the light comes in also affects the wavelengths of light that are being allowed to pass or not pass. So there's a slight angular dependence in terms of the, the function of how a filter might work. Typically that's not a big deal, but for very fast telescopes that can be an issue. 